What's up, YouTube? Scott, Scotty Tradition, back with uh, another video. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to say congratulations to the five new members of the uh, YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame. Um, of course, uh, Brad8671, um, been a long time coming, and obviously been making videos in this community for a very long time, and um, very, very deserving. Um, so it's always cool when you get uh, kind of acknowledged by your peers. Um, just uh, it's, a, it's an awesome thing. And then everybody else um, can't really say, you know, of course, any bad things about any of the people that were voted in, um, including, you know, Elite Hunters, James, um, and then uh, Scott at Reindeer Studios, uh, Picker Jim S, and Lou Rock TV, all very uh, deserving channels. And um, congratulations for, I guess, being acknowledged by a large group uh, percentage of your peers. That's, a, that's, a, that's an awesome thing. Um, and uh, before I get into a, a pretty cool mail day here, um, I did just want to say, please, um, if you guys wouldn't mind um, doing myself and Bart's cards a favor, um, we are currently doing the Football Card Hall of Fame uh, sort of contest. This is the inaugural class. You get to pick for 10 cards. I will include the ballot um, in the description of this video. So if you wouldn't do me a favor, it just takes a minute. Um, just go vote for 10 cards um, if you're any kind of football collector at all. And um, we do have a uh, very good participation so far, um, but every extra vote helps, and um, it kind of allows us to be a little more accurate in you know who's going to be in the inaugural class, um, which you have till Wednesday, February eighth, to vote, um, and then we will um, be announcing that with a video um, on I believe it's the day before the Super Bowl. Um, it'll come out uh, with the results and kind of myself and Bart's reactions to it. So. Uh, please just take a minute, click on the link, uh, vote for 10 cards, and um, every uh, extra vote just kind of helps make things a little bit more uh, accurate as far as the voting goes. So thanks for doing that. I um, really appreciate it. Um, now that those two things are out of the way, I did get a really cool mail day in. Um, this is a card that I've had my eye on for quite a while. Um, and while we talk about it, we're going to kind of go through a little bit of a 52 Bowman Large football <laughs> lesson if you guys are unfamiliar with the set. Uh, I've got some of the big uh, Packers team Hall of Famers in the back. And, of course, you got Bobby Dillon's rookie card in the middle there. He's an NFL Hall of Famer, was elected just a couple of years ago. So that's um, actually a pretty big card in the grade of an 8. Um, they're all high-grade examples back there, as you can see. Uh, Fred Cohn on the right, a uh, great you know, kicker slash back for the Packers. And then on the far left, you got Bill Houghton, who's a really good wide receiver uh, for the Packers as well um, for quite a few years. Um Dylan and Houghton are both in their college uniforms, and you got uh, Bobby Dylan, of course, uh, was a, uh, I think he still holds the interception record for the Packers all-time, nicknamed the Hawk. So just some cool, kind of awesome uh, Bowman Large football cards to preface this video in the back. Um, and let's get into the card that I picked up. So here we are. So this is a pretty big card for Packer collectors. This is the 52 Bowman Large Gene Ranzani. And uh, he was a coach for the Packers from 1950 to 53. Um, he was the second coach in Packers history behind Vince, Lo uh, excuse me, behind Curly Lambeau, who coached for um, just decades before that. So um, just kind of a cool historic card. Um, some other things about Gene Ranzani. He went to Marquette University. Um, and, you know, obviously very tough shoes to fill um, if you're taking over for Curly Lambeau. And overall, he did not do that great um record wise for the Packers uh, in the early 50s however he did there's a couple unique unique things about him in that you know the reason they kind of went with green as their color um was due to this guy Gene Ranzani um so the the Green Bay you know he, he said you play in Green Bay basically you're gonna wear green um before that Curly Lambeau was really a big proponent of the blue and gold colors um for the team and you'll still see that during throwback games and so forth um but I be, this is uh, I, it's only a 4.5, but this is an incredible card, and I'm going to kind of go through some of the reasons why that is the case. Um, so, obviously, 52 Bowman Large Football was in response to 52 Tops Baseball in their large cards and large pictures. Um, that 52 Tops Baseball set came out in spring, summer of 52, and then the uh, 52 Bowman Large Football here came out in fall winter of 52 in kind of a response to those bigger cards um they were printed on four separate uh 36 card sheets 
um, and they kind of went nine across the top and four down on each sheet. Um, so, and were released in two uh, separate series as well. 144 cards total in the set. You can see uh, Ranzani is a high number at 135. So cards numbered seven, 73 to 144 are considered high numbers um, and are issued in much smaller quantities because they were released later in the season. So that's kind of one thing this card has going for it is there's less to pick from in the first place. Um, and then the big second thing going for it is that it's considered a single print. Um, and those those single prints are basically divisible by nine and the card following. So, for instance, cards number 1, 9, 10, 18, 19, 27, 28. Um, and so those are the cards essentially on the edge of the sheets. And basically, um, if you're... If you look at some of the articles that uh, uh, PSA has written about this over the years and some of the uh, collectors, I think Greg Bussenow had an article that talked about this card in particular being extremely rare and almost non-existent with 60-40 centering or better. And you can see the awesome centering of this one, obviously. They, they just do not come up centered. They actually sell for quite a bit of money, even the uncentered ones. Um, but to find one <laughs> centered like this is pretty impossible. I don't recall seeing more than one, two, or three, like the entire time I've been looking for these over the last number of years. Um, they just don't come up. So even though this is only a 4.5, do not let that grade fool you. Um, it's really the centering that makes this card super cool. Um, this is on the far right edge of the sheet. Um, and the reason you had so many uh, weird cuts with this one um, I think the best theory out there is that uh, they actually use the same cutter as they did for the 52 Bowman small cards. And because the large cards took up more space on the sheets, um, you got a lot more cards that were not centered. Um, the reason being is they didn't want to uh, kind of reformat their entire machines and all their gears and everything because they didn't know like how successful this large product was going to be. So they wanted to you know, kind of keep it as the standard smaller cards until they knew for sure. Um, so w what happened was they kind of like offset cards more right and more left to try to keep the ones in the middle a little more centered. Um, and so they ended up having to probably discard a lot of cards on the edges. And then they kind of switched it off, varied it back and forth. So um, I think some of the estimates are is that these are almost half as rare in general, uh, the cards on the edges than the cards in the middle just because they had to discard so many of them because they were actually cutting into the picture of the card um, just to kind of make all the other cards on the sheet line up um, so i definitely found that kind of interesting and you know you never see this card and it's kind of cool to deep dive into it a little bit to figure out why that is and that is the reason for mr gene ranzani so card i've had my eye on for a few years um these 52 cards are just beautiful with the backgrounds and just absolutely love it. And it's going to go great into the Packers PC. So really excited to get this one. Again, don't let the 4.5 grade fool you. Um, to find this card centered like this, <laughs> not by not by my guess, but by uh, you know the people writing the articles and people at PSA, um, the word the verbiage is almost non-existent with 60 to 40 centering or better. And um, this is one of the nicer ones I've seen centering wise. So real happy to add this. It'll look great um, in the PC. Um, I do have a couple uh, other cards coming in. Um, probably make another video in a week or so uh, about those cards as well. Um, other than that, not too much going on. Um, again, if you want to just please feel free to take the time. Uh, click on the uh, documents link that I will leave in the description. And um, I'd love to uh, add... Uh, a couple more votes to the Football Card Hall of Fame that, again, will be the uh, induction will be coming out um, the day before the Super Bowl um, as Bart and I kind of react to the top 10 vote getters. And uh, maybe we'll kind of go through uh, some of the suggestions that we think should have been in, um, or maybe it'll just be chalk like we think it will be in. That will be the Hall of Fame. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, other than that, thanks, everybody, so much for watching. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.